lot of part of that. Hallelujah. And um, hopefully, you know, my deal will get itself together here. And there we go. We'll see. Hopefully, it's coming coming on. All right, all right. Glory to God. And so this morning, I want to uh, end this time with a decree that speaks about my faith will not fail. My faith will not fail. My faith will not fail. Again, decrees are those statements that we make that separate the past from the future. It's a, it's a statement of, that's enforced by law that, that separates yesterday and today, actually, from this moment on. Right? So up to this point, up to this point, just uh, 6.39 a.m. Eastern Standard, up to this point, my faith may have been failing. But I decree my faith will not fail. Right? So from this morning on, my faith will not fail. That's a decree. And a decree is a statement that, in our case, is, 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 is God's legislative will in the earth for us. It's a statement that comes not out of our own machinations, not of our own um, imaginations, but it comes from the idea of the thought that this is God's will in the earth, so I'm going to make a decree. I'm going to make a confession. This is God's will, right? And so uh, I'm sure you'd agree with me that it is not God's will that your faith would fail, right? So we can decree, my faith will not fail. And so let's look at this this morning in Luke chapter 22, the gospel according to Luke chapter 22, and um, verse 31 through 34. All right, here we go. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. Wow. I mean, that's a heavy situation. Now, this comes on the heel of them having um, um, communion together, right? Right. This comes on the heel of an argument that broke out among the 12 about um, who's going to be the greatest. So here they are having the last Passover with the Lord Jesus. And then they got the, got the kids table at the same table having a conversation on I'm going to be the greatest. No, you're going to be the greatest. No, I'm going to be next to you. I mean, they're having all this carnality going on, right? And then <laughs> Jesus helps them understand how it's going to really go down. And then he spins around and prophetically speaks to Peter. Simon Peter, he says, Simon, Simon. I gotta tell you something, Simon. Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. Satan wants you. May I may I make this personal to us? Satan wants us. He's demanded. To have you. That he might sift you. Like wheat. My wife and I discovered uh, this company called Blue Apron. And Blue Apron kind of sends you some meals. Uh, sends you the ingredients of the meals. You're going to put it together, right? But, but in some of those things, it's inspired me to, to cook some more. And inspired me to even bake a little bit too. So I made a pound cake. Man, I'm trying to tell you. You know why they call it a pound cake? Because there's a pound of butter in that cake, right? This is prior to the fast, of course. So I'm making this thing. But you gotta got to mess with the flour, right? you got to sift it. You have to, you know, do something to it. I guess it makes it lighter or something like that. So as far as I'm concerned, sifting was like just putting it in a colander and spinning it around a little bit, fluffing it up, you know? That's not what we're talking about here. When he sifts you like wheat, he puts you through a grinding agitating, irritating experience. And that's what Satan wanted to do with Peter. He said, I'm, I want to I wanna take Peter through a grinding, agitating experience that would separate him from his faith. The idea of sifting wheat was you take the, 
you put the weight in this thing and it would it would take the the, the wheat that you want to use from the chaff of the of that of the husk of it and 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 God Satan's plan is to um, place you in situations that separate you from your faith move you out of the place of faith that is the whole plan that is his whole deal because hear me Satan can't do a thing with you and me Unless he can separate you from the place of faith. He can't. Because faith because it's in, faith comes because of the word. It is absolutely indomitable. It cannot be beaten. Right? So he must separate you from it. And sometimes we've allowed our situations to separate us from our faith. Right? And this is the case here. Luke chapter 22 verse 31 through 34 Simon, Simon, Jesus speaking, behold, Satan has demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. Here we go. But I have prayed for you. Now, this is a heavy piece, and I'm going to go into more detail perhaps um, Sunday morning in a few hours. But, but, but hear this. Why would Jesus say that I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail Unless your unless your faith could fail, hear me, right? He wouldn't say that unless it's possible that your faith could fail. Now, several several days ago, we talked about no faith, missing faith, little faith, and great faith, different stages of faith. We might be able to add this somewhere in there as well, speaking about faith that failed. I must admit to you, if I'm honest with myself, and I need to be right, if I'm honest with myself. I've had faith failures. I had it, and then I got separated from my faith. Religiously speaking, others may not have known that, but the reality is, it is true. Right? And, and my faith failed. I mean, that, that could be a hard revelation to, to, to exp thinking because you're so sincere and you're trying, but yet your situations, your mindset, other people, whatever, that agitation sifted you and separated you from your faith. God forbid. Come on, make that confession with me. My faith will not fail. Glory to God. My faith will not fail. I will not be separated from my faith. I won't be. I will not be separated from my faith. Whatever experience comes, whoever goes, whoever leaves, whoever stays, whoever curses me, whoever blesses me, whatever situation, whatever valley, whatever mountain, whatever, 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 I am not going to allow it to separate me from my faith. And so Peter um, is in a situation, but Jesus says these words. Oh, it's such a blessed thing. He says, but I, Peter, I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Now what's interesting here, this is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the man that has walked with them for three and one half years. This is the man that has taught them everything they know about ministry in the kingdom. This is the man, and Peter was part of that group, that was transformed figure in front of Peter's very eyes. This is the man that, that from heaven a sound is heard. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Peter heard that. Peter watched him raise Lazarus. Peter watched him heal Jairus' daughter. Peter watched him cleanse the leper. Peter watched, watched him um, 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 pay his taxes supernaturally. Peter watched him go through all of this. Jesus spins around and says, Peter, Satan is about to, about to step into your situation and separate you from your faith. And this is Peter's response. Peter said, nah, man, <laughs> Lord, I'm not, I'm not ready to go with you. I am, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus says to him, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you even know me. What is he saying here? Peter's debating because Peter is simply caught up in himself. He thinks he sees it and knows it. You know, Peter's a bad dude. Peter's, Peter's gangster, and I'll prove that to you in a moment. And, you know, he's, he's all hardcore. But the Lord is saying, Peter, you, I know something you don't know. I see something you don't see, Peter. And, and, and you're about to get punked by a little girl. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you what's, what's about to happen. And he tells Peter, 
Listen. That rooster's not going to crow before you deny that you even know who I am. Not once, not twice, but three times. I'm talking about in the space of a few hours, Peter actually denied that he even knew the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're saying, not me, oh yes us. There's a little bit of Peter in all of us. Come on now, we got to watch ourselves before we wreck ourselves. And so a confession is my faith will not fail. But one way to make sure your faith doesn't fail is that you hear the word of the Lord. Amen? We hear the word of the Lord. And that's not always a directive straight from Jesus. Sometimes it's from somebody who's got a little gray hair in the things of God who can speak to you and say, Daughter, son, correct yourself before you wreck yourself because you don't know as much as you think you know. That's one of the things that, that will trip all of us up. And again, I'll speak for myself is when you think you're standing firm, the Bible says, take heed lest you fall, right? You have no confidence in your own flesh, in your own natural ability apart from the grace of God. And so Peter is in this situation where his faith is about to be separated from him, or I should say he's going to be separated from his faith. Not me, not me, Lord, never, not me. I'm the worship guy. I'm the preacher guy. I've lived right. I've lived holy. I've, I've sacrificed. Oh, God, never, not me. Oh, yes, you. Oh, yes, you. Oh, yes, you. Unless you listen intently to what God is saying, whether or not you understand it fully or not, but listen to what God is saying and you cling to what God is saying as opposed to what you think and feel, Right? Our thinking and our feelings got us in some situations. Right? But 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 <laughs> but if we read the scriptures correctly, when Peter goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, he couldn't pray one hour. He couldn't stay awake with Jesus one hour after Jesus told him, listen, dude, I'm in agony, man. We're going through a real hard time in a few moments here. And I need, can you not pray with me one hour? He wasn't even saying, man, I feel like, I, I feel like this sometimes. You, you can't give me one hour. You can't, you can't, you can't push and use your one hour. You got to just snore, man. After the Passover, man, they were just like trip a fan out. They just like, just, just snoring. They couldn't pray one hour. Right? And so then Judas, Judas betrays him. Judas attacks, he brings this whole, this, this legion of soldiers or whatever to, to get Jesus. And then Peter, all of a sudden, Peter wakes up. Peter's like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And then they go to arrest Jesus. It's in the Bible. They go to arrest Jesus. And guess what happens? Peter pulls a knife out. It's in the Bible. Peter pulls a knife. It tries to kill the dude who is trying to take Jesus. He said, no, 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 pastor. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says cut his ear off. Peter wasn't trying to cut that boy's ear off. Peter was trying to take his head from his shoulders. Peter's going to be like, no, I got this. You're not touching my Jesus. Peter's all in the flesh. All in. Peter, all in the flesh. I, I got this. I got this, Jesus. I got this. He... <laughs> So Jesus looks at Peter and says, you know, Peter, Peter, that's not how we, we're not doing this. We're not going to do it like this. These guys are going to get theirs, but that's not how we're going to do it. And so Jesus goes to his ear and puts it, puts it back, back on his head and heals him. Are you kidding me? So they arrest Jesus and then everybody scatters. The disciples, they're gone. They're like in the hills and running and they're out. They're out, right? And so... <laughs> this is true. I'm telling you, it's in the book. And so there, and so then it's cold, I guess. And so Peter tries to go by fire to warm himself. And somebody recognizes him and says, Aren't weren't you with that 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 Nazarene? Nah, I never knew the dude. Right? Somebody else says, Oh, hmm, the way you talk, you you know, you sound like that. No, nah, I never knew him. And apparently some little girl rolls up on him and says the same thing. And Peter Curses. This is the man that hours ago was having the Passover lamb with the Messiah himself. 
and then in a moment, it gets all crazy. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So we have to, here we go, family, at the end of these 21 days and at the end of all this fasting and praying, we, we have to make this decision that by the word of God, I'm going to live. What is God saying? I'm going to do that. I'm not going to keep checking in with my feelings and my emotions about it. Whatever God is saying, I'm going to move in that direction. I want to respond this way, but I'm going to respond based upon the word of God. Right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, if you do that, if you do that, you win even when it looks like you're lost, you won. I just did what God said to do. I just did what it seemed right for me to do, right? My phrase I use is this, it seemed good to me and to the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I don't get a directive from God. It just seems the right thing to do based upon the word of the Lord, amen? So if you and I are going to mature in the things of God, if you and I are really going to grow in the things of God, family, right? If we're really going to grow in this thing, it comes down to this point where we're deciding Let's, let's respond and live according to the word of God. Let's not speak our mind. Let's speak the word of the Lord, right? Let's not act out of our flesh, but let's respond according to the word of the Lord. That doesn't mean that sometimes when you respond uh, based upon the word of the Lord, you're not going to be angry because you will be angry. The Bible says be angry, but sin not. It doesn't mean you're not going to be fed up with things. Jesus was. He went into the temple, kicked over tables, Went outside, braided a whip, came back in and beat everything in that, in that temple and kicked over tables. Don't tell me Jesus was walking around talking about, let's have praying hands today. No, Jesus said, listen, you all have defiled my father's house and I'm about to go off in here, right? That's what happened, right? Don't tell me Jesus wasn't uh, expressing some frustration when he said, how long do I have to be with you? Bring the boy to me and he cast out the, the demon and told these guys, you perverted and twisted generation, Right? Come on, so, so it's not that your emotions don't play a role, but your emotions must be sanctified and flow into the word of God to do what must be done, right? So emotion is important, but it cannot be the guiding principle of our lives. The word of God must be the guiding principle of our lives, right? Jesus knew in John chapter 11 that he was going to raise his good buddy Lazarus from the dead in a matter of moments. But the Bible says Jesus wept. Those things don't seem to be able to coexist. Jesus, you know how it's going to end up, but yet you're crying. Dude, what's the problem? No, because Jesus was 100% God, but 100% man. And what he did upon the earth, hear me, family, what he did upon the earth, he did as anthropos, as a man or humanity, anointed by God. So he felt what we felt. Does not the Bible tell us that we have a high priest? who's been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So Jesus, despite knowing that in hours everything was going to be all right, he still felt the pain and the loss and the grief that was around him. So the Bible says Jesus wept. Are you hearing me? So, so no, 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 don't think that your emotions mean that you're not necessarily in faith. Sometimes your emotions are just the, the, the physical expression of what you're going through, but you know you're going through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In that shadow, my friend, it's a little dark and clammy and cold. But I'll fear no evil. Right? That's a confession. I'll fear no evil. Right? Whatever I'm going through, I'm going to go all the way through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what God is doing in the lives of some of you right now. That despite what you're feeling, don't get tricked into thinking because you're feeling a certain way that you're not still walking in faith. Keep walking. Keep moving. Keep making the right confession. Let the tears flow, but keep walking that thing out. Yes, you're lonely, but keep walking it out. Unless you're by yourself, but keep walking out. Unless you're going through a procedure, but keep walking that thing out. Come on. Yes, your bank account says this, but keep walking it out. Come on, amen. Yes, they left you, but keep walk. Yes, they talked about you, but keep walking it out. Hallelujah. My faith will not fail. That's your confession today. My faith will not fail. Come on. My faith will not fail. Even I have to say that even when I feel that I've got zero faith, my faith will not fail. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't speak your mind. You've got to speak your heart. And your heart needs to be filled with the word of the Lord. Amen. Come on. we got to finish up here. So Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 34, Satan's trying to sift Peter and separate him from the place of faith. Separate him. Agitation, irritations, upsets. Disappointments, reversals, 
um, negative reports, bad reports, bad things. All those things have a tendency to, to want to pull us and take us and separate us from our faith. Right? But Jesus said, I've prayed for you. I want to cover this a little deeper, much deeper, actually, in, in our service on Sunday morning, um, um, talking about somebody prayed for me. But we want to just touch this briefly here. Jesus says these words, but Peter, Peter, you're about to blow it big time. I know, I know you, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're all of this, Peter. I understand, I understand, I understand, I understand. You'll be the first bishop in Rome, Peter. You know, you got a great destiny, but I need you to understand, Peter. You're about to blow it. But Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. May I tell you this morning that if no one on your Facebook page ever prays for you, if your pastor bishop never prays for you, if your bestie never prays for you, Please know that Jesus prays for you. Well, you say, you say, you say, brother, you say, brother, you say, brother, that was 2,000 years ago, but my Bible also tells me in Hebrews that he ever lives to make intercession for us according to the will of God. That means Jesus there at this very second is interceding for you by name. I could weep over that. That the Lord Jesus is interceding for you. The Lord Jesus is speaking. He's, got a, he's speaking a good word for you. Jesus is, Jesus is working the back channel right now. Jesus is, do you hear me? Jesus is working the back channel right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whew. Jesus is working the back channel for you. If you really want to go deeper, we can't, we can't, we can't right now. But if you really want to go deeper, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost makes intercession for us too. Oh my goodness. You got, you got, you got, you got the Holy Ghost and you got Jesus praying for you. Come on now. You got the Holy Ghost and Jesus praying for you. But family, 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 hear this, hear this, family. Oh my goodness. Hear this, 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 hear this. Just, Peter did, just because you failed the test doesn't mean you have to fail the class. Just because you failed the test doesn't mean you have to fail life. Just because you got knocked down, messed up, just because you sinned, just because you failed, just because you failed that test in that time, in that moment, doesn't mean that you have to fail in fail the entire class doesn't mean you got to flunk out of school because you failed that test. I believe, this is me talking, I believe the Lord Jesus took this moment and said, Peter, I know we're having the Passover meal here. We're drinking wine, eating bread, having a meal. We're reenacting the Passover. We're, you know, we're, all this is great. But Peter, I got a word for you. Peter, you're going to go through hell in here in a moment, Peter. Peter, some of you in the middle of what I'm talking about. This is a post-prophetic word for you. You're going through the agitation, irritation, the upset right now. You're going through the valley. You're going through the darkness. You're going through the situation. You're going through the pain. You're going through the separation right this very second. And just because you're in the middle of it doesn't mean you're going to stay in the middle of it. Just because you find yourself in the middle of it doesn't mean you're going to die in that thing. Come on, amen? And so Peter... Here's this word, and Jesus says, I have prayed for you. Jesus has prayed for us in advance of what we go through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have prayed for you. Now, time, time does not permit me to unpack these words. But these words are heavy, man. This word prayer, this word prayer is not just... You know, Lord bless Peter prayer. This word prayer means to, he bound himself to Peter's issue. He bound himself to the point of death of Peter's issue. Peter, I've locked myself in, dude, so that you come through. 
Hallelujah. Jesus has locked himself into you. No matter what you're doing, you've been drowning. You went down for the second time, about to go down for the third time. But I got news for you, but Jesus has bound himself to you and you're not going to go down. You're not going to stay down for the count. Most certainly not. You're coming through this thing in Jesus name. Come on, say my faith will not fail. Hallelujah. My faith will not fail. Glory to God. Just because you failed the test doesn't mean you got to flunk the class. You're going to stay in that broken down lane the rest of your life. It shall not fail. My faith shall not fail. Man, I feel emotional about this this morning. Because some of you have given up. Although you're on this, you're listening to this. Some of you basically have resigned yourself. I'll never really get better. I curse that thing now in Jesus' name. That is a lying demon. That is a doctrine of a devil. I am telling you now, it's not only going to get better. You're on this periscope. You're on this Facebook Live. You're on this telephone call. Why are you there? Because God is pulling on you. Jesus has prayed for you. And Jesus is awakening you to the reality that he has not finished his work in your life. Greater, better, more is your portion. Greater, better, more is your portion. Greater, better, more is your portion. Say it with me, my faith shall not fail. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those of you who are on this, on this uh, decree for the first time, listen, for 19, 20 mornings, we've been talking about making decrees, making good, declaring what God says, going into the place of prayer, closing the bedchamber, closing the door, entering into the bedchamber, having the, hear me now, the intercourse with God. And producing new life, right? That's what that means. And when we do that, we're hearing, we're receiving the seed, the spermata of God into the womb of our hearts, right? And we're bursting what God is doing. So when you're rising this morning to hear the decree, you're getting the seed of God in the womb of your spirit. And so throughout the day, you should declare, I shall live and not die. <laughs> and I shall declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has turned my mourning into dancing. Right? Decree that thing. I declare that I am a believer and not a doubter. I declare that I, my faith shall not fail. I declare that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I declare that avenues of revenue come my way. I declare that it is the will of God that I prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. I declare that in Jesus name that my body has been redeemed by the Lord. And that I am the purchased possession of God. And that my body is now the temple of the Holy Ghost. That my body is a sacred place. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And as such, Satan has no legal right or claim to my flesh. I declare in Jesus' name that every cell in my body is operating perfectly and normally and pulsates with divine life. I declare in Jesus' name that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I declare that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. It's my mortal body hallelujah right now my body is coming alive come on talk to yourself my body is coming alive in Jesus name no tumor no growth no malignancy can remain in my body every demonic satanic infection virus infirmity that attach itself to my body must die instantly upon impact of the temple it must go in Jesus name it has no right no demon has a right no generational curse has a right to live in my body because the blessing is greater than the curse my faith shall not feel fail hallelujah Glory to God. Man, whoo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. If I had an offering, I'd give myself an offering right now. You hear me? Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the word of the Lord. Whew. I just wanted to have nice, normal, easy decrees. I just wanted to get on Facebook Live and Periscope and just talk about making the statements that God would have for us. Right? <laughs> I cannot help it. Hear me, family. Your faith shall not fail. Do not allow your history to determine your future. Your yesterday, your today is not a prophetic 
declaration of your tomorrow. May I say it again? Your past nor your present is a prophetic declaration of your tomorrow. You need to prophesy your tomorrow. You need to prophesy your now. I say in Jesus' name, I have more than enough to carry out your great commission. I say in Jesus' name that I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I say in Jesus' name that my body is not only the temple of the Holy Ghost, but functions perfectly and normally in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I declare that no satanic, no demonic power can suppress, oppress, or any way stop me from doing what God said to do or becoming who God said I already is. I declare in Jesus' name that avenues of revenue open unto me. I declare that faith is for a lifetime. My tears may endure for the evening, but joy has now come in my morning. I declare God has turned my morning into dancing. I declare that I am a fruitful, productive person in the name of Jesus. I declare that I have more than enough for generational breakthrough and blessing. I declare in Jesus' name that everywhere I go, I'm led by the Spirit of God. The steps of the righteous are ordered of you. God, I thank you for being righteous in you. I'm being ordered by you. I declare that although I saw death, I walked away from it, and death shall not claim me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Some of you have been to that point. Some of you have thought you wanted to die. Some of you were disappointed that you ever woke up. This is going back a little ways now. But the reality is, not only is not God not done with you, he's got much more for you. I'm not saying God has just kept you alive so you can kind of exist for a few more years. Nay, nay, nay. God has, God has resurrected you. You shall live and you shall not die. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, finally, this is something that Jesus taught us, right? And we need to, we need to do that. We need to do this. One of the things we have to do is... Um, instead of speaking what you see, speak what you're supposed to see, right? Instead of spending so much time in prayer talking about the mountain or the problem, speak to the mountain, speak to the problem. Command your emotions to line up with the word of God. Amen? We need to learn to, we need to, learn to practice that. All right? We need to learn to practice that. Hallelujah. Listen, it's time for us to go... Listen, so glad we're uh, together on, on these morning decrees. Listen, if you, are, if you don't belong to a local church somewhere, uh, may I say to you as you are um, social media um, ad hoc pastor, you're out of order. You need to belong to some local assembly somewhere where you can be a blessing to them, they can be a blessing to you. Right? Inevitably, you'll go through something that. However, let me encourage you to nevertheless take your imperfect self and get connected with a bunch of other imperfect people to hear a perfect word from God. All right. And so please do that. All right. Get connected to a local assembly somewhere. King's Cathedral, everybody in their respective places, please let's worship God together. Let's honor him as we go forward in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I lift my hands over these individuals today. Asking, Father, that your greatest blessings would yet manifest in their lives in short order. I declare that um, over them, for their sacrifice, there shall be a reward, according to Hebrews chapter 11. I thank you, Father, for their diligence, there shall be a reward. I thank you, Father, for productivity and fruitfulness in all of their lives. They shall live and they shall not die. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, thank you for being a uh, part of this. Uh, I'm, I'm honored that you would uh, hang in there with us uh, for all this time. Hey, listen, um, stay with. Um, just keep following on Facebook stuff, if you don't mind, in Periscope. Um, there's more to come, different things. And together we can grow and go. Amen. But be connected to your local pastor and your local church. Amen. Wherever that is, whoever they are, be there. All right. Love you all. Have a wonderful day. And remember, Jesus is alive. By now. Hey, listen, before you go, um, when you, when you, um, if you could post something on, on, on how these decrees have helped you.
really helped you. All right. So uh, if you'll do that, that'd be a great blessing to many people, even around the world. All right. Have a wonderful time. Bye now. Hey, folks on the phone. Listen, thanks for being part of this. Love you. We'll see you in a few minutes if you're part of the King's Cathedral. Bye now. Hey, mom and dad. See ya.